In this episode, I will explain the biology of all two members of the potamide family. Starting with Pentanilita, our resident scavenger of the cup. Pentanilita is a relatively simple body in comparison to other organisms, having an oval-shaped body, four tendrils for forward and backward movement, two arms protrude from the sides of Pentanilita that hold their primary defense, and two smaller arms extrude from the front of Pentanilita. These gather food, soda, and are the primary offense. On the sides of the quote-unquote head of Pentanilita, there are, on each side, rudimentary mouths for eating, breathing, and mating. These mouths eat via the front two arms getting covered with and carrying carrion, and the arms being inserted into these slits in the hard keratin. Under these is a pad that it uses a large amount of saliva to get food into the throat where it's taken to the stomach, digested, then processed through the small intestine, of which is far longer than most other organisms relative to body size in either cup. This allows Pentanilia to extract as much nutrients from its food as possible, due to its food being half-rotted carrion. Its front two arms double as a way for Pentanilia to hear and smell. After finding a body, Pentanilida's body will start producing far more adrenaline and testosterone. Even in the brain of Pentanilida, not only can you see the far more developed and enlarged portion for smelling, but also you can see the far larger adrenal mandula. This is all so that if any other scavengers or hungry predators come for some food, they will have to fight a very hyper and aggressive Pentanilida, who is not afraid to whip enemies with their smaller arms. But if Pentanilita is not guarding a body, pumped full of hormones, or has met a rival too strong to fight, they have an incredible means of defense. Their much larger arms contain an organ that holds and releases four nutrient-filled, protein-packed pods that also have an incredibly strong scent to them, allowing predators to easily identify and eat these, allowing Pentanilita to leave the scene. The skeletal system of Pentanilita is quite a bit simpler than, say, the Natantids or Trandafura partially due to Pentanilita's body largely being simpler. But even things you would expect aren't present, namely something to support and protect the intestines, which kind of just rest on top of each other, but are supported from the sides by fatty meat. But also the back tendrils have far smaller bones than expected, and the big arm has no elbow structure, being only one solid bone. To reproduce, Pentanilita will cover its forearms with a mixture of saliva and sperm from the mouth and will attempt to find a female, but as a blind animal, Pentanilita has to find out if the other Pentanilita is a male or female, as not to waste any time, energy, or sperm. To do this, the male will touch the very front of the other's body with its hands. If the other begins to leave, it was a male. If it stays, it's a female. The male will proceed to insert his arms into the female's mouth, and she simply waits until she feels the need to lay her newly developed eggs. But the females can mate with multiple males and will mix all of the sperm to give her children as much genetic diversity as possible. She will spit her eggs into her hands and then place them on top of her body where they will stick to her. After hatching, the babies will stick with their mother for an indeterminate amount of time. The mother will protect them and feed them for the first few weeks, but after five or six weeks, she will chase off kids she finds still feeding from her finds. But some kids end up staying close to their mother for up to 10 weeks, but often lose track of her and end up doing things themselves until they reach adulthood. Now for Durus Ad Nomen, who was also a resident scavenger, but has evolved to live in more arid conditions. The front, smaller arms of Durus are better and can capture more particles from the air than Pentanulitas, basically meaning that they have a stronger sense of smell and can identify where a carcass is more efficiently. Durus's arms also have more segments to capture more food and soda faster. Durus's method of eating is also a bit more efficient, now using muscle movements they can get food into the throat with less saliva wasted. Durus also has more tendrils, having five, not four. But the most significant difference between these two is the pods. Durus, instead of having four smaller pods, they have one massive pod. Pods so big that they alone can be a whole meal for a predator. But these are more expensive to make, and unlike Pentanilita's pods, which can be released no problem, Durus's are so big that the artery and vein connecting the pod to the organ comes with which can cause serious pain, trauma, and also quite a bit of blood loss. 
Durruses are also less aggressive than Pentamelida, mostly due to the less competition it has for food. And speaking of food, Durus ad nomen holds the record for the longest intestines for any animal of either cup, having such long intestines that it takes days for food to get through. The intestines are also more protected by some ribs bending backward to protect them, mostly to relieve some pressure on keeping up with the fatty protective layer. Duruses mate the same as Pentamelida, except the mothers are more willing to deal with their kids for longer, typically keeping them around for seven to eight weeks. And that's all for the potamides from the speculative biology inside a McDonald's cup.